of Evidence 2, the topic on Documentary Evidence, Lecture 3. In this video, I am going to explain to you the law relating to public and private document. Now, what is public document? When I ask basically generally anybody, right, as to what does it mean by public document, the general answers that I normally get will be documents where the public have access to. Now, is that a correct definition of public document? Indeed, it is not right. <clears throat> definition of public document or what documents can be regarded as public document is actually found under Section 74 of the Evidence Act. Section 74 of the Evidence Act says that public documents, the following documents are public documents. A. Documents forming the acts or records of the acts of Roman I, the sovereign authority, Roman II, official bodies and tribunals, and Roman III, public officers, legislative, judicial, and executive, <coughs> whether federal or state, or of any other part of the Commonwealth or of a foreign country, and B, public records kept in Malaysia of private documents. Now, if you read the meaning or scope of public document, you can basically categorize public document into two. One, who made the document? If a document is made by sovereign authorities, by tribunals, by official bodies, by legislative, judicial bodies, then that particular document is basically regarded as public document. So if a document is produced by state government or even by federal government, that documents will also be regarded as public document because you are asking the question, who made the document? Secondly, where is the document kept? If you have a private document, but this private document is kept as a public record, then that private document now becomes a public document. Say, for example, right, you may have a statement of accounts. So you, this is a company who have a statement of account. So you may have an audited account record and you are filing it at the CCM or SSM. So you are filing it at the uh, company's, security, uh, com company's commission. So what happens here, the moment you file that particular document, that particular document is actually your own company's private document. It's a statement of account. But the moment you file it at CCM, then people who have interest in that particular document can make a search and can get the record of that private document which belongs to you. The moment it happens that way, the, the private document that you file at the SSM or CCM becomes a public document. So that is why under Section 74, you have to ask the question, who made the document and where is the document kept, right? And Section 75 <coughs> basically explains the meaning of private document. Yeah, basically all documents which are not public documents are private document, okay? Right. <coughs> now, when you talk about public document, so just now there was a misconception that public have access to a document, then it becomes pub, a public document. It's not right. In fact, when you talk about public document, whether you can have a certified true copy of the particular document or whether you have a right to inspect the particular document, which is private, a public document, it depends on whether you have an interest to that particular document. So if you have no interest on a particular document, then you have no right to inspect. Now, if you refer to, this one you can refer to under Section 76. <coughs> now, Section 76 is where you have a certified copy of a, of a public document. Now, whether you can get a certified copy of a public document or not depends on whether you have right to inspect that particular document. And basically, under Section 76, <coughs> There is no automatic right to inspect or have access of public document. And in fact, so many public documents you don't have access to. Yeah? Maybe document on specification of uh, some uh, military ships, yeah? some contractual arrangement between uh, Ministry of Defense and one particular arm, uh, 
uh, company that produce arm that are all company uh, they are all private document sorry public documents but you don't have access to it a lot of reports that is uh, made by the select committee in the parliament you don't have access to so because it is actually when we talk about public document, we are not talking about where the members of the public have a right to access it. You may not have a right to access it, but it remains to be a public document. So when you talk about public documents, there is no automatic right to inspect a particular document. Right to inspect must correlate to the person interest in the particular document. So if you are interested in this particular issue, you do not have a right to inspect. It has to be beyond that. It has to be beyond mere curiosity. It has to be uh, basically a right that you have uh, that you have to it has to ha it has to be more than a mere curiosity. It has to be some kind of right that you have to then you can have access to that particular document. Yeah, so that is basically under section 76. Remember, there's no right to a certified true copy of a document unless you have a right to inspect. Okay, now evidentiary value of a public document. <clears throat> now the document, the moment a particular document is regarded as a public document, then it goes against the exception to the hearsay rule. Because public document is one of the exceptions to the hearsay rules in the sense that whatever entry that you made in a public document, it is deemed to be true, right? Because public document here will be regarded to be true even though the maker or the person who made entry into that public document is not called to verify the content. So it's very different when you are dealing with a, pub, a private document. So if you have a sale and purchase agreement, right, the agreement between company A and company B here is a private document. If you, the content of that particular document cannot be regarded as true unless the maker of that particular document, that is the party, confirmed in the court through the process of examination, chief cross and re-examination that the content is true. However, when you have one piece of document, say for example, a report made by the parliament, select committee of a parliament, Right? That particular report is deemed to be true without the need for you to call the maker. So if a report is produced, then you do not have to call the maker to verify the content of the police report because of the, the select committee report because public reports are deemed to be true. There is an exception to the hearsay rule. There's no need for you to go on to the strict rules on proving uh, the content of that particular document. <coughs> but remember... That particular document can only become public document if it satisfies the definition of Section 74 just now and the entry must be made pursuant to Section 35 of the Evidence Act. Now, if you refer to Section 35 of the Evidence Act, Section 35 of the Evidence Act is referring to relevancy of entry in public record made in performance of duty. An entry in any public or other official book, register or record stating a fact in issue or relevant fact and made by a public servant in the discharge of his official duty or by any other person in performance of a duty specifically enjoined by the law of the country in which the book register record is kept is itself a relevant fact. So it means that for a public document to be produced and have some kind of evidential value, the public document must be so the public record must be of public, uh, of, sorry, the entry must be made in public records. So whatever entry that you have, you wrote down there is a public record and it has to be relevant to the facts and issue and it has to be made by a public official in the performance of his official duty. So if you have, say for example, and a public official making an entry into a record book, so it is deemed to be true as long as he complied with the requirement of section 635 when he made the public record yeah so the entries is admissible to prove the truth as the, of as to the fact entered without the need for you to call the maker so if you have officer right you have a particular document that have entry they have made entry into this particular record right and then the document is signed by officer b there is no need for you to call Officer B to the court to verify 
betul ke whether it's true or not the content that is written there it is deemed to be true by virtue of section 35 of the evidence act yeah there's a need for you to call the maker remember public document it is a, it's an exception to the hearsay rule and when you look at the admissibility of public document <coughs> right okay once it is produced certified through copy section 76 then the content is deemed to be proven by section 74 and automatically there will be presumption that the document is actually genuine and true right so you have that you have this one yeah presumptions as to public documents once a certified true copy is standard under section 77 the presumption relating to public documents will be invoked and what is the presumption if you refer to section 74 right Presumption as to the genuineness of certified copies, so the court shall presume that the document is properly certified by an authorized public official, so it is deemed to be genuine. And not only that it is deemed to be genuine, the content is deemed to be truth the moment it is a public document. Right? Another presumption that we can look at will be under section 80 here. So, Section 80 here is referring to presumption as to documents produced as record of evidence. Whenever any document is produced before any court purporting to be a record or memorandum of the evidence or any part of the evidence given by a witness in a judicial proceeding or before any other, any officer authorized by law to take such evidence or to be a statement or confession by a prisoner or accused person taken in accordance with the law and purporting to be signed by any judge president or of a session court or magistrate or by any such person as a foresaid, the court shall presume that the document is genuine. Any statements as to the circumstances under which it was taken purporting to be made by the person signing it are true and such evidence, statement or confession was duly taken. Right? This is an example where Right, remember when you when we study uh, the topic last time. Right, so if you have, yeah, uh, incident of confession. Remember when we discussed about confession last time. Confession is actually under section seventeen. Uh, all right, cross ref seventeen subsection two cross refer to section twenty four up until section thirty. So if you have here an accused person here, for example who is now brought before a magistrate, right? And he making a confession before a magistrate. Of course, when a magistrate recorded the confession, the magistrate has to confirm that he has to basically verify that the accused person here, when he made the confession, he made a confession voluntarily, therefore satisfying Section 24 of the Evidence Act. And the confession, of course, is made in the presence of a magistrate. So that basically, uh, either he made it directly to the magistrate or in the presence of a magistrate, maybe through uh, uh, an interpreter. You have section 26 there. And it is a duty of a magistrate if an accused person here wants to make a confession, the magistrate must determine that the confession must be voluntarily made. So the magistrate will ask question to the accused person to determine whether he was actually voluntarily making it or not. The moment the magistrate is satisfied that the accused person here is making a confession, then the magistrate has a duty to record the confession. Yeah? So the magistrate is recording, is recording the confession. Once the confession is recorded by the magistrate, then Section 80 will be invoked, whereby there is a presumption that this particular document is deemed to be genuine, right and the the statement was made are true and the confession was duly taken now what what does it means is that in this context there is no need for you to call the magistrate here as a witness in the court yeah later when the matter goes for trial maybe the prosecutor uh, may want to tender this particular confession. Of course, in Malaysia, we have to bear in mind the existence of Section 113 of the Evidence Act. But here, the confession is made before a magistrate, so you can tender a confession. So when the confession is made before the magistrate, it can be tendered as evidence in the court, right? 
and there is no need for the magistrate here to be called to be a witness because section 360 here yeah, that particular document, which is a confession made by an accused person to the magistrate here, is regarded as a public document and it will be deemed to be genuine and it will be deemed to be true and the evidence was properly taken. Right? So there's no need for you to call the magistrate to cross-examine the magistrate to see whether it was true or not. But can this particular confession be challenged in the court? Yes, it can still be challenged. This is a presumption. However, in the event that the accused person still want to challenge the relevancy and admissibility of the confession, it can be done through the process of void and trial. Yeah? Whereby, in this process, you got to see why, whether, because he's now claiming that it was not voluntarily made, then you got to give evidence, yeah? Why he, he did say so. so. So, section 80, here is an example where the tendering of a public document, the moment a public document is made, then there's a presumption on that position, right? Also, you have other presumptions that is applied, that is in section 81, that is presumption as to gazette newspaper, so it is presumed to be genuine. So, if you have a, 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 a law that has been gazetted, so it is deemed to be genuine, yeah? So, that is the position. Right? So, summarily, when you talk about documentary evidence, right? Definition of documentary evidence, we have that under section 74. Remember, characteristic of documentary evidence, it must contain public interest, it has to be made by public officials, and the public officials must write the document in the discharge of the duty. Admissibility of public documents and the entry of course. The moment the document is regarded as a public document, it becomes an exception to the hearsay rule, whereby there is no need for you to tender the primary document, the original certified through copy is okay, but the content of the document also you do not have to prove it. It is deemed to be true. The maker of that particular document need not be called. The person who make an entry into the public record need not be called to verify the content. So there is a presumption of genuineness there. The evidential value of public document, right? All right? There are two issues that this particular case, Gopinathan says that when you talk about public documents, there are two distinct issues that has to be considered. That is number one, the admissibility of public document. So if a document is relevant under section 5, yeah, it can be used for the purpose of establishing maybe something related to the facts and issue or relevant fact. The moment you say that this is a public document, you satisfy definition 74, right so it can be tendered as a public document yeah and then there will be issues of weight issues of weight is a different issues of altogether right a document may be relevant and admissible remember at the end of the day the court is the one that has the power to determine how much weight for you to put on a particular document right so this is a very much a question of fact okay so that is actually public document now, private document, remember we look at the definition of private document just now under section 75. Private document refer to all documents other than those mentioned under 74, right? All documents which are not public document, which are not made by the relevant authorities, which are not made by public official, are regarded as public, a private document. Now, when you talk about documents which are private document, bear in mind the tendering of a private document as much as possible, comply with the best evidence rule, you tender the primary original document. Section 6162 has to be complied with, right? So these are the requirements that you have to bear in mind when you are dealing with private document, right? You have to tender original document as much as possible, primary document. If you don't have, you want to tender a secondary document, you go back to the law on the secondary documentary evidence, Remember, you have to prove that the original is not there. Satisfaction of Section 65 has to be made, right? The document has to be properly authenticated, properly to be properly proved to be genuine. Then only the truth of the content of a public document must be established by calling the maker of that particular document, right? And of course, sometimes there's a need for you to have the pro document properly stamped, right? So what I'm saying here is that Okay. Just now we have pri uh, uh, primary primary document, 
then and you have secondary document then you have private uh, public document and then you have private document right the moment you have public document it is very it's a very special kind of document it falls under definition in section 74 automatically there is a presumption automatically there's an exception to the hearsay rule whereby there's no need for you to call the maker all right uh, there's no need for you to call the maker and then basically uh, certified true copy is okay if you are to tender and the document is deemed to be genuine and the, the content is deemed to be true right but the moment you have a private document yeah, the moment you have private document, you've got to revert back to the previous law. The private document, as much as possible, you have to tender a primary document. And if you don't have primary document, you only have secondary document, then you've got to see whether the requirement of section 65 is complied with. Right? This one you've got to look at section 61, 62, yeah, 63, as to what kind of document are you producing. If it's your private document here, which you define under section 75 here to be private document, you got to see whether it is a primary private document or secondary private document. See whether it compares with section 61 to 63. If you are producing a secondary document, yeah, secondary private document, remember you have to comply with section 65. Proof of authentication, 67, and genuineness of the document has to be proven. Content also has to be proven. So this is a situation that you have to deal with. So the moment you have public document, the, uh, the way for you to bring it is actually slightly simpler because of the presumption and it, and it has been treated with special uh, treatment due to the nature of the particular document. But the moment you have private document, you have to very be very strict on the, on the law. Yeah? So with that, uh, we finish our discussion on uh, public document and private document. In our next video, I will explain to you relating to the computer evidence.